Okay, so in this video we're going to settle the score once and for all and determine the difference between exothermic and endothermic processes. So if you're like me, you've gotten these two mixed up over and over and over again. So this is just going to be a, you know, fairly intuitive, straightforward approach to, you know, the difference between the two of them. So in order to understand the difference between the two of them, we need to define, we need to first define a couple of thermodynamic terms, okay? The first term we should define is the enthalpy. And what the enthalpy is, is a measure of the total energy of the system. So we need to define, define enthalpy because the change in enthalpy is what determines, the sign of the change of enthalpy is what determines whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So what's a system, you may ask? Well, a thermodynamic system is the particular part of the universe that you happen to be studying at the time. It could be a reaction vessel, it could be the world, it could be the entire universe, just whatever you define it to be. In most chemistry textbooks, the system is usually the reaction vessel. And the surroundings is everything else. Now, it's important to note that when we talk about enthalpy and the sign of enthalpy, the point of view is generally fixed on the system. So we're thinking, is, is the system gaining or losing energy? We're not really thinking in terms of the surroundings. So if something's positive, that means the system is gaining energy. If it's negative, that means the system is losing energy. So just you know, keep that in mind. Okay. So an endothermic process is one in which the system gains energy from the surroundings. And in an endothermic process, delta H is greater than zero or is positive. Conversely, an exothermic process is one in which the system loses energy to the surroundings. And delta H is less than zero or negative. So I can't really fit them both on the screen at the same time. But just if you need to, take a moment to, you know, at least reassure yourself that you know these two facts here. Endothermic system gains energy. Exothermic system loses energy. Also know the signs of delta H for an endothermic process and an exothermic process. Okay, now that we know that, we also need to understand that this sign convention and these facts that were just mentioned, they apply to physical processes as well as chemical reactions. So in other words, you don't necessarily need to break any chemical bonds uh, in order to have an endothermic or an exothermic process. In fact, I'm going to first go over some physical processes, or endothermic versus exothermic in terms of uh, physical processes. So the basic idea with the physical processes is that there's a lower energy that's associated with particles being closer together. Particles meaning the atoms or molecules. So it's kind of like gravity. If I hold this pen up here, there's more energy associated w with it being up here than when it's down here on the paper. And that's why when I let go of it, it, it falls. It just it wants to fall. There's a greater energy associated with it up here, right? Chemical systems work in a very similar way. So an endothermic physical process is, is one in which the particles, whether it's atoms or molecules, are going from a state of being close together to a state of being further apart. So processes like melting, evaporation, boiling, and sublimation, what, what do all these processes have in common? They all involve the molecules being closer together at first and then moving further apart. It takes energy to move them further apart. So for all of these processes here, you're going to have a positive delta H. Make sense? An exothermic physical process is one in which the molecules are actually becoming closer together. They're going from a state in which they're far apart 
to a state in which they're closer together. So things like condensation and freezing, those are both exothermic physical processes. And you guessed it, they have a negative delta H. So I, as long as you remember this fact up here, that there's a lower energy associated with the particles being closer together, and that in general chemical systems like to proceed towards a low, a low energy, the lowest energy possible, that's why the pen falls down. As long as you know that, and you know what all of these processes are, you don't really need to memorize whether the delta H is going to be positive or negative. You can just sort of infer it. So it may help you to memorize it. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, th there's certainly a lot of other things that you're going to have to memorize, and this doesn't have to be one of them. Okay? So now that we've talked about physical processes, let's move on to uh, chemical reactions. So, in general, an energy input is needed to break a chemical bond. Therefore, bond breaking is endothermic, right? Positive delta H. Conversely, energy is released when a chemical bond forms. Therefore, bond forming is exothermic with a negative delta H value. So, let's say we have a, a basic reaction scheme here where A and B are my reactants, and C and D are my products. Well, what's going on in this chemical reaction? Well, you have the bonds of the reactants are breaking. So that's an endothermic process. So that means delta H for this process is going to be greater than zero, or positive. At the same time, you have bonds of the, react of the products, C and D, forming. So that is going to be a negative delta H. And basically what it boils down to is the relative magnitudes of these two terms are what are going to determine are what is going to determine the overall sign of delta H for this entire reaction. That's basically all it is. So we can actually view this graphically in a enthalpy versus reaction progress diagram. The red curve here corresponds to an endothermic process while the blue curve corresponds to an exothermic process. The R stands for reactants and the P stands for products. Notice that for the endothermic process the final energy of the products is higher than the energy of the reactants, so you're climbing up. Also, if you look at the exothermic process, the energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants, so you're climbing down. So that means you have a positive delta H here, and a negative delta H here. This is probably something that you may encounter on a test at some point. So, Alright, well I hope that was helpful and uh, all the best.